감사합니다. Thank you very much. 어, 오늘은 이제 중요한 제목이 빛의 경제 회복입니다. Today is a very important title. This restoration of the economy of light. 이것은 재벌들이 하는 것이 아니고 빛의 경제 회복은 믿는 자가 하는 겁니다. And the restoration of the economy of light is not something done by conglomerates. 어떤 면에서는 성전 건축을 하고 있는 여러분에게 유일한 사명이요 축복일 겁니다. But the people of God, and to do this church constructions, it is the true missions and a calling that we have. 자, 그렇다면 빛의 경제 회복을 하는데 어떻게 해야 되겠습니까? If that is so, how can we do this restoration of the economy of light? 어, 저는 이거 좀 진심으로 하는 얘기인데 잘 모르는 것 같더라고요. I say this with sincerity, but I don't think people really know this. 우리 후대들에게 빛의 경제가 이런 거다 가르쳐야 되는데 우리의 사명 아닙니까? 어떻게 가르쳐야 되겠습니까? It's our mission to be able to teach our posterity. This is the restoration of the economy of light. But how can we do this? 또 전국 세계에서는 똑똑한 인재들이 올라오고 있습니다. Also, we see that in all places around the world, we see all these very intelligent elites arising. And we have to teach them this is the economy of light. But it's very sad that we don't have someone to teach this to. Now, can we have to have this great knowledge of finance? Or do we have to study some kind of skill set? Of course, that is one aspect of the economy of light. But today, you must restore receiving true answers. And you have to be able to explain to our posterity, hey, this is the restoration of the economy of light. Right now, we're giving worship here in Changwon, but we're giving this worship worldwide. Everybody's hearing God's word in Seoul, Busan, all throughout the world. And because Changwon is the background of where we're giving this worship to, this is a place where we could give glory and praise to God. 자, 그러면 긴 시간 걸릴 거 없이. And so, without making a lot of time with this, we have to explain. This is the restoration of the economy of light. 대부분 제가 이렇게 인재들을 만나 보면은 좋은 쪽으로 볼 때는 굉장히 열심히 해요. You know, when I look at the gifted and talented people in a positive aspect, they're very hardworking. 그러나 조금 안 좋은 쪽으로 보면 죽을 때까지 열심히 해요. But the negative point about that is that they work very hard to the point of death. And they work so hard to the point that only their thoughts are correct. Now, have you not met a person like this? Um, my husband, he's so smart. He's a gifted and talented individual, but he only speaks about himself. And he only has his own thoughts. He's lived that way, so he has no choice but to be that way. If not, he can't be where he is today. That means he probably lives his walk of faith that way as well. Do you think that's right? Then what's going to happen to God's tremendous plans? This is the issue. Now, there are levels to economies. No, are you so studying hard working? That's very good. Well, I'm going to study staking my life onto this. That's good. I'm going to stake my life to hold my skill. That's rightful. You have to understand that is actually just a level one. Isn't that so? Then there is a next level. Now, these people who are successful, they have some kind of thought, some kind of perspective and religion and faith that they have. Now, we see the powerful nations, they have the ideology to, to really overtake and seize other nations. And then another step above that is that people, there are people who think, I need to be in the world or a level of realm that, that God is in. That is the New Age movement. And they have taken everything. No, we have to be possessed and we have to become the Nephilim. That's what they're saying now. We're sitting so idly and these people are standing up in this way. And right now, without them, we can't even live our lives. 
smartphones, the internet, it's all created by these individuals. And Stephen Jobs, when he was very young, he said, inside these cell phones, I will brace the world. Bill Gates is a new age member. He said he will move the world, and he really is moving the world today. And yet we are here just struggling because of uh, money, and he's going out giving all these type of donations to uh, uh, Africa. Now, this is something that we shouldn't be envious of or fantasizing about, but this is the truth. That is the second level. And then they say that they have this secular trans, uh, secular meditation movement. We have to overcome this. What kind of economy must arise? We have to have these skills rightfully, but we also have to know and be instilled with the partisans of God. And so I wrote about the seven partisans because I had the seven partisans within my prayers throughout these years. You don't have to follow me, though. And I caught on to the journey, following along the, the blessings, the powers of the throne of God. And I was able to see the guideposts that could never change in all the various places throughout my journeys. And it was from this point on that the doors of world evangelists started to open and answers started to come. And no matter what anybody says, world evangelization will be fulfilled. And I wanted to relay this to the children, but it's not easy. And we need to really relay this partisan to restore the economy of life, but it's not an easy thing to do. And, it's, and actually, we're not able to teach this at all. When we look at Paul, we could speak about this very easily. And so because this is the epistle of Paul, we can see that Paul was a very intelligent man. He basically, he probably graduated top level in Harvard University or Seoul National University. And his family alone was astonishing. He was from the Benjamin tribe. And then we see that he was from one of the top three cities of that time in that world. And that was where he was from. And even if you wanted to get a line to be taught by this man, you couldn't, but he was taught by Gamaliel, who was the most intelligent man at the time. And Paul, he had the Roman citizenship. He was a tremendous person. But that was just level one. Majority of the people, they are stuck here and they want to do everything with this level. But that's not a walk of faith. That's just you're living your life. You're living your own life. That's not a walk of faith. And you have to catch on to that. People who are born into poverty, if they're able to overcome that, that becomes a great benefit to them. But there are so many people who are not able to overcome that and they live that way. People who became rich out of poverty, that's something to compliment. But you can't live your walk of faith in that same way. Because walking your walk of faith is not something that you do on your own. That is the work of God. I'm not sure if you really understand my words. And if you do not understand these words, it's better off that you don't even teach your posterity because you're just teaching whatever you're learning and you've learned. But Paul knew that at this point that they cannot do it with this. And so what happened? And so he became the leader of this ide ideology of the Jews. 
He received education in these places where we see the Freemasons or the Jews are taking lead in. But that's not the economy of light, is it? The things that the powerful nation has stolen away, that's not the economy of light. The three organizations has raised up a lot of finances in the places without God. Is that truly the economy of light? That's not. And Paul caught on to that. What did he say? All the things that I boasted of right now, I think of them as rubbish. I'm so ashamed of it. And he says, it's bad for me. I studied so much and I had this tremendous background and yet that is all rubbish. He had this tremendous background as a Jew and he says all of that is not of benefit to me. And then there's a confession that he made. There's nothing that I fulfilled. And then I'm going towards to be grasped by the hands of Christ. I don't need the things of this earth. I'm going to run towards the rewards and the calling from heaven above. Isn't that tremendous? And then, I don't need this Roman citizenship because our citizenship is in heaven. That's it. And so the only person that really spoke about the works pertaining to the kingdom of God was Paul. And God used Paul for world evangelization. Do you understand? This is something that you must teach to your next generation. Oh, you have to study hard, rightfully, by God's power. But even that is just a basic. You need to have the strength to really save the spiritual world. And you have to study and really enjoy the power, the power of the throne and pray with that. And with that, you have to go into the world. This is being able to establish the partisan of light. Isn't that so? This is so important. The whole world must understand this. And right now, the church is constructing right now, Busan, Changwon, you have to understand this. To firmly hold the covenant, raising up and restoring the economy of light. The unbelievers are making a mess of this world with the economy of darkness, but we need to restore the economy of light. China, Russia, North Korea, they're not even blinking eye. They have all these types of economy of darkness. And it's beyond what we can imagine. And right now we see that in America, the, the economy of darkness through drugs and whatnot is moving that nation. And we need to have the economy of light to overcome that darkness. Oh, I'm going to run with all my might. That's something rightful. That's just the basic level. But if you're trying to use that to do your walk of faith or run your family or run your business, it's not going to work. And ask your staff members. It's not going to work. And so all you need to do is hold on to the covenant to establish this partisan of light and take that with you outside. And so we see a lot of these examples in the Bible, but just by history, we even have these individuals. People, parents who truly believed in God told their children. The things that you can see, the things that things, the thoughts that you can have, with that you cannot do world evangelization. You have to hold on to God's word so that you can survive and live on throughout this week. Who is that? It was Rockefeller's. That he was an individual. 
that truly existed. He was so poor, and yet he was had this the the answer to move the Americas later on. Who was that? Wanamaker. These are true individuals that existed. And if you read his autobiography, you see that this is truly a person of walk of faith. No matter what, he said, I will not do anything where he cannot give worship to God because he knew how worship was important. Oh, keeping the Sabbath is not just a level of legalism. It was to keep that worship to receive God's grace. And then one individual said, in the midst of such difficulty, he said, it's not difficult at all. Why? Because I'm a child of God. He went in as a janitor, and later on he became the president of the biggest steel company in the world. Who was that? We see that he was Swab. And so even for our posterity, you have to hold on to the covenant. That is your responsibility. We have to relate to the next generation what the economy of light is. And we can also live with this partisan of light to restore the economy of light. And so by this opportunity, hold on to it as your covenant. I have held on to this as my covenant. When I was young, I wondered, why are we so poor? That's the covenant I held on to. Why must we be poor? For what reason? Why is it that our church and our parents are so poor? What's the reason behind that? I ask those questions. To what, what, what reason are people so sick and so destroyed that they can't give worship, that the families are being destroyed? And all the more, why is it that they cannot do evangelism? Isn't that something that should just rightfully and naturally take place? A normal person getting married, having children, do you have to go to an academy to learn how to do that? Why is it that we are able, not able to do this? That's the question that I started to ask. And all the questions that I've asked, God gave me answers to. These are the questions you must ask as well. What is the economy of light? And as a business person, am I truly teaching our next generation and the remnants? And to our children, what the economy of light is, but am I able to do that? And so absolutely, there are these levels. And I'm not saying there are some theological explanation of these exact three stages, but we have to be able to explain that to our next generation. There's not a single person who studied as much as Paul did, and yet he never stayed where he was. There's no other person who received the education of the Jews better than Paul. But he knew that was incorrect, so he came out of that. He was a person who only worked for only Jesus Christ, the power of the throne of heaven, and only the Holy Spirit. And with this partisan of light, he was able to fulfill three things. What is the first? Knowing this, with this partisan of light, we give our offerings. And that offering becomes the beginning of the economy of light. Is that right or not? So starting today, do your offerings differently. Did the offering that you give today is the beginning of the economy of light? I ask yourself honestly, before in the past, I didn't really care about offerings. Why? Because I need to have money to give offering. I didn't have any money to give. But one day I realized what offering was. That's right. And it was from that moment on, all these problems of economy started to resolve for me. Because I knew that I had the partisan of light. You need to have the partisan of light. 
And then as I was praying, I saw the restoration of the 7-7 prayer inside of my life. That was the light of the partisan. And when I took that partisan of light wherever I went, all these things start to revive and be restored. And even now, all I'm worried about are the people who are envious of these answers. Of people who are saying, oh, he spent a lot, spent too little. I don't really know about all that. I don't even need to know about that. Because that's not the life that I'm living. Everywhere you go, the economy of light must be restored. For example, Abraham Abraham realized, why is nothing working for me? He realized his unbelief. And what was the evidence of that? He said he took his, uh, his nephew Lot and told him to take everything. He went into the mountains and he started to pray. And how much did God bless him? He had over 318 servants alone. And think, think about his soldiers himself, the 318, and then their wives and their children. That's over a thousand right there. Have you ever never been to a retreat? Giving food for 1,000 members of a retreat, that's not easy. That was the household of Abraham. And he won the battle against Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, there is a condition to having these wars or battles. There is a condition when you surrender. You go and you match with the conditions that the other opponents have. And then if you lose that battle, you have to give your inheritance or the property that you have unto them. And so we see that these are the, the conditions that they have. And so we see that the king of Sodom came to Abraham with all these conditions. And what did Abraham do? He said, no, I'm not going to take your gifts. And your bribes. He said, not even a needle or a thread I will receive from you. Why? Because you're going to go off and say that I became rich because of what you gave. Basically, he was saying, I'm a person to receive the economy of life, so I don't need your help. What's more astonishing? And we see that on his way back in Genesis chapter 14, that he gives a tithe to, uh, to this individual. Do you understand why your offering becomes the economy of light? It is the beginning and the start of the economy of light. You must keep this in mind. And so we are so many, there are so many evidences to this. And during that hard time of the 40 years of the journey of the wilderness, they gave it all for all their precious jewels. All these things that they had together in the time of Egypt, and then with that, they raised up the tabernacle. That is the beginning of the economy of light to save others. Obadiah, he was able to hide off 100 prophets. And then they took all the, there's another individual who took his food that he could eat and he gave it to Elijah. And then this one woman, in order to help Elijah, takes all the individual objects to help him. And what they own to offer help. And that was the beginning of the restoration of the economy of light. We have to really raise up this bardas of light to share to our next generation. It's not just the bardas that just uh, you know, live this life as much as we can, but the bardas of life to really succeed in this life. A partisan to save the people dying away in the or, or three organization. We have to explain this to them. We have to establish and build this partisan of the throne. And it's that point on that the beginning takes place. Do not lose hold of this. It's not just that. No, this is what God says to Haggai. He says to raise up the holy temple. Go back and do that. Go back and rebuild the temple. Because there's no place to give worship. 
And it says that the heavens and the earth and the ocean and the skies will shiver and tremble. These are the words of me, the Lord. Six times he said. These are the words of the Lord God Almighty. That was the beginning of the economy of light. Now, so you have to understand what this beginning means. And so holding on to this covenant, you're going out. Holding on to God's word to bring restoration and revival, we need to have enough to be able to save this world. And no matter what anybody says, we need to have the restoration of the economy enough to do world missions and save other people. And we're not saying let's live a good life, eat good food. But the, the first thing is get rid of all your past experiences and what you've been learning as your standard. It's so easy to make that your standard. And that's why you hit a limitation. We're not at that level. We are looking at the things of God. We are the people to receive the blessings of God. There's so many examples in the Bible to give you proof. Now we see that the works of the Holy Spirit took place in Mark's upper room. And all the people that are gathered there, they, all their possessions they gave to the Lord. That was the beginning of the gospelization to save the world. What does it say today? He said he was giving thanks for the grace for giving us all these things in, inside of extreme poverty. That was verse 2. And then what does it say in verse 3? And it says they were able to give beyond their ability. These are people who knew what the economy of light was. If you're doing this, giving their offering during this church construction time with other things and other thoughts, you're going to fall into 10 tests. Oh, somebody gave this amount. You're going to hear those words and you're going to fall into a test. You have to resolve before the Lord. Starting today, I will start the restoration of the economy of light. What can I do? Then you just begin. It's not hard. And so I said this to the Lord. Lord, how much longer will I live? And for how long would you allow me to live on this earth? And as I live on this earth, I'm going to have to move around. Then the, the rest of the offering that I have to give with my life, what, how much should I give? I'm in prayer for that. I'm praying about that in front of God. This is the beginning of the economy of light that gets rid of all the darkness. In verse 5, it says, They gave themselves first of all to the Lord, and then. And so it was getting rid of all their opinions and giving all the offerings to the Lord with all of them to Him, thinking about Him first. Then, number two. It is the economy of the remnants. That is the goal of the economy of light. God blessed Isaac's farming 100 times. What was the reason behind that? Only then can he do world missions. That is our goal. Your children has to receive God's grace and they receive the grace to receive 100 folds than others. What's more important? He went and restored all the whales that his father had dug up. But all these bad people that are envious, they would go and then fill these wells up. But what's important here? Isaac didn't just go and restore the wells that his father had dug up, but he found the source of blessing. And so because of you and the gospel that you relate to your children, the children, they'll be able to find this source. Only then can world evangelization be fulfilled. 
And this is what Joseph said. Brothers, it is not you who have sold me. You have to be at least to this level. God sent me ahead of you so that I may save lives. That's right. That is the purpose of the goal that we have for the economy of light. And so absolutely, just plant the seed. And we're going to talk about church construction a little bit more during the second service, but we have to hold on to the accurate covenant. Why did God raise up these miracles in Babylon? It's very simple. In order to restore these remnants to go and relay this light. Why did Paul go into the synagogues? There was a reason behind that. So that the seed that you planted, fruits will bear, and then through that your children will go and shine the light. Number three, evangelism and missions is the economy of light. Simply put, this is the future of the economy of light. And so you have to firmly hold on to this covenant. Do not fear. Do not be worried. God sent this person off as a slave and he raised them up as a governor. Isn't that so? God sent this individual as a, a hopeless, powerless orphan, and yet God raised him up as a leader to change the age. Firmly hold on to this covenant. This is the future of the economy of light. So the economy of light is a fearsome thing. It is the light of creation. And so we see these evidences, surely. David, who was just a shepherd boy, he overcomes Goliath and he raises him up as a king of that nation. And through a farmer who held onto this covenant, he raises him up to really move the Dothan movement. Why do you think he raised him up before kings? He raised up these remnants, and these remnants stood before kings. Because only then can they able to they're able to save the two three seven nations and the five thousand tribes. Why do you think God allowed them to be enslaved, be in poverty, and be captive? Because they have to go out to all these places of the world and shine the light. Now, what's more important is that your posterity. There's no reason for them to be enslaved or be captive because they have this light. So even just this week alone, Lord, may you restore the economy of light in my life. May me and my children raise up and establish the partisan of light. May we raise up the partisan of light. And so you have to begin this prayer. That partisan that Abraham established. And the partisan that was raised up by Joseph and Moses and all these few minor disciples. And the partisan that was raised up by Samuel's mother and David's father during that age of the Philistines. All you have to do is hold on to that. And when they're taking captives to Babylon, he says that he resolved before the Lord. That's all you need to do. That's nothing else that he did. He resolved before the Lord. And the works took place by God. All they did was resolve before God. You have to hold on to this. Abraham and a few church officers say, we have to see Rome also. They understood these words. And it was after that that God started to use them. Absolutely, this will happen. If you truly are going to walk this walk of faith, don't just do it just haphazardly. Really do it. Hold on to the covenant and go before the Lord. Don't worry about anything else. If I can't do world evangelization, I can't be used for world missions and to save this church, then what is the point of living this life? And so these type of worries that you have, that's, that's very great, just as we heard last week.
Just do that and amazing things will arise. In the midst of that storm, God sends his angel and he says, Paul, do not fear. You must stand before Caesar. I saw this. When I was young, I saw what prayer was. And I didn't have to read a book about it. I saw prayer. God allowed me to see what prayer was. I saw how it is to really pray. You know, my mother, she brought a very small wage and she had to raise us, uh, her children. She would set aside a tithe offering. And so she would give these tithe offerings every single week. And then even with just that, it was enough. But she was so thankful for everything. She gave Thanksgiving offering too. I was so sad at the time, but my mom was so happy. She would give this tithe offering, and Thanksgiving offering every single week. And at that time, I thought my mother was so foolish. Oh, you're suffering so much. God already knows you're suffering. That's what I said. But that's not so. What's more amazing? And my, when our church did church construction, I don't know where she found, hid all these money, but she brought all that and gave it to the church. She's a person who never gave me money. But it was with that grace that I've been living all these decades. How does God bless people? These are things that are never to the point where I've never even been sick. If we are sick, we have to die. God knows that. But as I was going on, this journey of evangelism, not once did God make me even faint. God knows that. And not once did I have to go ask for a lend of hand because of money issues. I helped other people, but I never gained help from others. And until now, we see that God has called all of you to do world evangelization as well. I'll come to the conclusion. May you make the greatest church of Gyeongnam. Then nobody will leave you. And then enlarge in everything. And then your choir, make it a hundred members. Make a place for all the multi ethnic disciples. You have to have no reason. Oh, I came to Emmanuel Changwon Church. They have no reason. It's only Christ, only God. We have to have a build a church that way. We have to get rid of all of our plans because God's plan is sure. And we have to get rid of all of our calculations because God's grace is abundant. Simply put, if you see, if you can't see God's plan, then you have to use your head to do something. But if you see God's plan, then why would you use your head? I know. I know the future of evangelism movement, so I, there's no reason for me to use my head because of it. And people, they can't wait, but all you need to do is wait a little bit. But don't just wait. That's why it's so difficult. You have to wait in enjoyment. Enjoying the partisan of light, you wait. And then answers will come, and with that answer, you make your challenges. If this does not work for you, how hard is it for you to live this life on earth? Then you have to go and relay this hardship to your children. And there's so many people from overseas who are living here just living off of daily wages. How are we going to save them? We have to help them establish the partisan of light. Only then can they restore the economy of light. That is our absolute calling and mission. And even if you're just holding on to the covenant and praying about this, that's all you need to do. People say, is it enough just to pray? That's someone who does not know the spiritual realm or the power of prayer. That's a person who really doesn't know about life. In our life, our thoughts, in our heart, it makes tremendous works take place in our lives.
I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ that today could be the greatest beginning inside of Changwon. Father God, we give you thanks. Help us to establish the partisan of light now. And may our call and may our mission be to restore the economy of light. And with that, may we be able to save the churches. With that, may we be able to save the posterity. And may we be able to revive all the broken places throughout the world. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.